Hi guys. So today I'm going to talking about the thoracic vertebrae as we can see. Yeah, so this is our thoracic vertebrae. Like I said in all my previous videos, the first and the first thing to do is to know which bone it is, right? So this is our thoracic vertebrae and I'll be telling us on how we can specifically identify the thoracic vertebrae that when we see a thoracic vertebrae, we'll be able to see that, oh, this is actually a thoracic vertebrae. Now to the general features of the thoracic vertebrae, just like every other vertebrae, we have the body, but in this case, the body of the thoracic vertebrae is heart shape. Our lumbar vertebrae is kidney shape, but the thoracic vertebrae is heart shape. We can almost see this love kind of shape. So it is heart shape. It, we have our pedicle, we have our lamina, we have our transverse process, and we have our spinous process. Again, body, pedicle, lamina, transverse process, and spinous process. Body, pedicle, lamina, transverse process, and spinous process. Now, I know the next question would be, how do we now identify a vertebral bone if it's all having, or if it's also having the same characteristics as the lumbar vertebrae, as the cervical vertebrae? Yes, there is actually a specific or a distinguishing characteristics of the thoracic vertebrae, right? And the first one is the presence of coastal facets on both sides on the body. So we have coastal facets in the superior part, coastal facets in the inferior parts, right, on both sides. So these smooth structures that we are seeing, they are coastal facets, and they articulate with one other thing, right? I'll be mentioning it later. Also, another thing we can use to identify the thoracic vertebrae is also the presence of coastal facets on the transverse process. So, coastal facet on the transverse process is smooth. So, I'll be telling us what all of this coastal facet articulate with in a bit. So, now, to, let's just go over the general features again. The body, the pedicle, the lamina, transverse process, spinous process. Now, since we've identified our coastal facet, this is our superior coastal facet, inferior coastal facet, transverse coastal facet, can we see that? Located on both sides, superior coastal facet, inferior coastal facet, and transverse coastal facet. We also have our articular processes. This is our superior articular process, this elevation here on both sides, superior articular process, and inferior articular process, right? Each of these processes has a facet. So we can see our superior articular facet, superior articular facet, then inferior articular facet, right? Superior articular facet, inferior articular facet. We also have our vertebral foramen. Now, as you can see this, the vertebral foramen is round. The vertebral foramen of the, of the thoracic vertebrae is round. In the lumbar vertebrae, it is triangular, but it, it is round or circular in the thoracic vertebrae. So the body, heart shape, vertebral foramen, round, transverse process as in coastal facets, spinous process is long and directed downwards. Spinous process is long and directed downwards. As compared to our lumbar vertebrae, that the spinous process is what? Is directed posteriorly but quadrangular in shape and short. So our spinous process of the thoracic vertebrae is long and directed downwards, but that of lumbar vertebrae is short, quadrangular, and directed posteriorly. We have the superior articular process with the superior articular facets, inferior articular process with the inferior articular facets. to the attachment of thoracic vertebrae. Like I mentioned before, for any vertebrae at all you see, this area can be painted. This area can be painted. 
and the question is what is attached to this area just like the way it is painted in lumbar vertebrae if you have not seen my video on the lumbar vertebrae please check out my playlist and watch the video on lumbar vertebrae so this area give attachment to the anterior longitudinal ligament so they can just paint the anterior side of the body and give attachment to the anterior longitudinal ligament then posteriorly posteriorly we have the posterior longitudinal ligament which is similar to that of lumbar vertebrae again anteriorly anterior longitudinal ligament posteriorly posterior longitudinal ligament right then we have on adjacent lamina just like we have for the lumbar vertebrae adjacent lamina gives attachment to ligamentum flava so if there was another thoracic vertebra on top of this one two adjacent lamina the, the one below and the one above we give attachment to ligamentum flava right so to the attachment again anterior longitudinal ligament posterior longitudinal ligament ligamentum flava now there is no muscular attachment on the anterior surface of the thoracic vertebrae however the spinous process of, the, of all the thoracic vertebrae gives attachment to the muscles of the back from t1 to t12 give attachment to one or more of the following muscles and they are the muscles of the back so this includes the erector spinae, the latissimus dorsi, our multifidus, our rhomboid major, our rhomboid minor, our serratus posterior, and trapezoids. Again, our erector spinae, our latissimus dorsi, multifidus, rhomboid major, rhomboid minor, serratus posterior, and trapezoids. So this spinous process of all the thoracic vertebra gives attachment to one of, or more of those muscles. So that is a typical thoracic vertebra. So check out my video to know the differences between the thoracic and the number vertebrae so you can be able to identify and differentiate it thank you, thank you.